good. Uh, let me stop talking and let me actually show what that uh, what conformity looks like and how the integration uh, works. So I will share my browser. And hopefully by now you can see it. So this is a conformity dashboard, right? Like I said, not everybody necessarily needs to see it if you have that running on an environment, but it's also really cool to have this visibility. So that's how it looks like. It's really simple. It, it gets me all my AWS accounts here. Uh, it shows my, uh, my overall uh, uh, adoption of the well architected framework, but also by pillar across all my accounts. And I have this nice graph here to make it easier to have this visibility. So usually to add an account here, I would click in add an account. I would of course pick AWS here and I would give a name to this account. And then I would need to pick either manually or automatically set up. I would do automated here so I can show you how, what it looks like. It's pretty much a cloud formation template that creates the two IAM policies and the role that I mentioned before. You need to deploy that stack. It's going to output uh, ARN that you need to enter here. Press, press next, finish, that's it, right? Really simple, but when you have the scale that you probably need, it doesn't scale, right? So that's why we have the control tower integration. As you can see here, we have five accounts right, on my uh, control tower. And if you look at here, we have exactly five control tower accounts. So as soon as we, deploy, we create a new account here, we are going to have visibility on conformity, right? And all it took was to deploy this conformity lifecycle hook. And that was, uh, that was pretty much it. Uh, as soon as I deployed that, this is going to ensure that because of the control tower integration, we are going to have visibility across all my uh, AWS accounts, right? Good, but uh, what kind of visibility then, right? What conform is providing me? Let me click here in browse our checks. And as you can see, we have a lot of information about my accounts. Uh, really useful information such as S3 bucket public access by Apollos or uh, Canary access token was used somewhere else or AWS config is not enabled. So we have a, a lot of good information, but at the same time, it's a lot of information. So as you can see here, we had over, almost 18,000 uh, checks done by conformity across all my regions of all these accounts. So it's really interesting to see that conformity is actually capable of uh, filtering that down to what matters the most to me so I can start from there, right? So let's say uh, uh, probably you are, you are a security person if you're watching this webinar, right? Because of Trend Micro name, because of AWS Control Tower, so I'll check security. And let's say that we have a requirement of following SOC2 on this account, right? So I'm going to remove media and low for now and what is successful. And those 18, almost 18,000 checks became a little bit less than 500, right? So I'm just looking at things, misconfigurations that I need to act right now because they really matter to me because it fall under the bucket that I, I, I care, right? But you can even be more specific. Maybe you can do uh, per region, per service, per resource type, uh, per tag. So maybe only what is tagged with project, uh, project owner equals team A or something like that, right? So that's pretty interesting. Uh, but also we can map all these detections to like I said before, the well architected framework. So let me remove all the filters that I, I had here. I'm select all again. And right away, I can see how all my AWS accounts across all these different regions are mapping to the well architected framework. 
So really helpful, not just for security, but because security is just one of the fields, but the entire team, especially if your organization goes over uh, well-architected reviews. And if you don't, you really should because it's an amazing tool to make sure that you're leveraging uh, the AWS uh, as best as you can, right? But again, hey, I just care about security. That's, that's good. We can also map to different standards, SOC 2 being one of them because I mentioned SOC 2 before. And as you can see here, we're mapping these detections straight to the SOC 2 criteria, right? And you can always uh, click here to see exactly which checks are being made against this criteria. And then uh, even dig further and see exactly what is going on in, in which account. Right, so uh, really, really, really useful information. And like I mentioned before, we are capable of integrating with different tools. Uh, we don't want to have the security team, uh, uh, not sorry, we don't have the developers or the SRE or whoever learn yet another tool. So we integrate with all these different uh, tools here to make it easy. And we are not here to flood them with noise. We wanna be really specific on what they care about. So let me give a, a Jira example here. We can actually have triggers to make this communication channel be, of course, triggered and have a, 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 a task be created in Jira, right? So maybe we don't care about everything, maybe we just care about everything but security because the security team has handled the security piece maybe. Uh, maybe only what is higher, higher, but only if the owner is team A, right? So now team A is not receiving communications because of team B uh, misconfigurations, right? They're just receiving information that actually matter to them. Or we can be even more specific, maybe only if the uh, environment is production, right? So we don't care if there's a misconfiguration in the dev environment, that's what the dev environment it is for, right? But we care about production. So you can be really specific here as well in order to not generate noise, but actually good information for them. Also, uh, we can create these tickets automatically or send a Slack message automatically or manually as well. If we do manually, what would happen is that for every detection that we have, that of course fits into that, uh, fits into that uh, information that I shared before, uh, the, the, the filtering for trigger, we would receive, we would see a, a button here. Let me go, see, like send uh, via Jira or open a service now ticket or send via SNS, right? So we are capable of doing that. And something that I mentioned as well as remediation other than doing that uh, is the, oh, actually there's something else I forgot to mention that I think is hu hugely important here is this resolve button. We don't have writing permissions to our environment, so we're not going to mess with your configurations. So when you click this resolve button, in reality, it takes you to what I think is the most powerful piece of conformity, and yet it's public and free and anyone can access, right? So as soon as we finish this webinar, please don't do it right now, we're still having this nice conversation. Go to cloudconformity.com, click in knowledge base, and you would have exactly the same kind of access that I have. And for every single rule here that we have, every single detection capability that we have in conformity, we also have an entry here in, uh, on the knowledge base. And for every entry, we have a description on why this is a recommendation, why this is a best practice. And this is hugely important because uh, if you're told that something's wrong, is something. If you're told that something is wrong and you get exactly why this is wrong, is something else, right? It's, it, 
and that's just, it goes exactly with the DevOps, uh, enabling DevOps across the organization that I mentioned before, because DevOps is all about continuous learning. And this tool over here, the knowledge base is amazing because of that. And because it's free and open, anyone can start using it right now. Uh, and we have steps to audit your environment, either to the console or CLI for every single room, something that it wouldn't need to do if you had conformity deployed on your environment but also uh, how to remediate uh, this misconfiguration through the console or CLI, right? Something else that I mentioned before was the auto remediation capability. I won't go over a bunch of details here because we just have 10 minutes left and I wanna leave some uh, time for questions. But uh, because I mentioned that we don't have right permissions, auto remediation kind of seems weird but the way that we build it is that you don't need to, still don't need to provide us right capabilities because you would deploy this open source serverless framework project on your on your uh, environment, and then uh, only these pieces here would have writing capabilities to your environment, and these pieces are managed by you, not us, right? We would leverage the SNS integration to trigger the right lambda to fix. Uh, the, the misconfiguration automatically, 